Well, we'd like to welcome you again. Uh, we'll continue studying the family. We are into the area of educating our children, preparing them from heaven. And we see how a father and a mother combined as one, united in Christ, will do a work that would endure for eternity. That's a beautiful promise. That the little thing that we're doing every single day at home, and sometimes they seem to be insignificant, even non-important, they are. Because they are like little blocks, one on top of the other, building a building. And that building will last throughout eternity. I want to share with you a, a, a statement. And this one is taken from uh, Testimonies for the Church. Walk volume 6, page 227 says, Wonderful is the work which God designs to accomplish through his servants, that his name may be glorified. Listen, God made Joseph a fountain of life to the Egyptian nation. Through Joseph, the life of that whole people was preserved. Think of this for a moment. One rightly trained youth, one in a nation, Egypt, pagan nation, at that time was the most powerful nation on planet Earth. And Joseph, by being faithful to God, faithful when he was in the house of that lady that wanted to seduce him. Also faithful when he went to the prison. Eventually, God vindicated his faithfulness. God knew that he had to go through affliction to refine and polish his character. Don't forget that he has been daddy's little boy. And he needed to toughen up. He needed to man up. He needed to grow and be strong and be faithful. And through the afflictions that he went through, slave and then a prisoner, he learned to trust in God. He knew that he could not do it, that he needed to depend on God and God alone to do the work that God wants him to do. And even though he was disappointed because it's not nice to be in a prison, for not committing a crime that he was accused of committing. On the contrary, he was faithful. The lady, she was lying. And he went to the prison because of her lie. But even then and there, he decided that he was going to be faithful to God. And then God placed him as the number two man in Egypt. And because of what he did for that nation, the entire nation, a pagan nation, was saved. We also know that his family in Canaan that was running out of food, they were also saved. So even though they did evil to him, by the grace of God, he was able to make a difference in his family behalf. That means that your children, my children, they need to be prepared like Joseph was. Because God has a plan for them. Perhaps, once again, to save a nation. And that would be wonderful because that nation, they knew that Joseph was not a pagan as they were. They knew that he was serving the God of heaven. He, they knew that he had a different God. And they had the opportunity of knowing about Joseph's God. I have no idea, but perhaps when we get to heaven, we will find out that a number of Egyptians will be in heaven as a result of the testimony that one faithful young man had in Egypt. I continue my reading. It says, through Daniel, God saved the life of all the wise men of Babylon. Don't forget, they were decreed by the king to die. 
And because he intervened and God in his mercy gave Daniel the dream and the interpretation of it, he was able to save all the wise men of Babylon. They were pagan, they were Chaldeans. Chaldeans were the priests of the Babylonian religion. So not just the pagan, even the priests that were performing the pagan rites and ceremonies, they were saved because when faithful young men intervened and God used them to do a marvelous work. See, we need to prepare our children to become like Joseph in Egypt. We need to prepare our children to become like Daniel in Egypt. We need to prepare our children to become like Queen Esther in Persia. Because of her, her nation, the people of God were preserved. See, when, when this movement, the Seventh-day Adventist movement, came into system, God used a lot of young people. The group that remained faithful after the disappointment, and there were fewer than 50 people, but most of them were young people. Let me give you a few examples. For example, James White. 23 years old. Stephen Haskell, 20 years. John Lovell, 20 years. Andrews, 21 years. Annie Smith, 23 years. His brother, Uriah Smith, 21 years. Helen, 17 years. They were young people. And God used those young people. They didn't have much money. They did not have a worldly education. They didn't have internet and iPhones and computers and cars. None of that. They were very simple people. They were farmers. But God was able to use them because they decided to be faithful to God and his word. So we need to train our children today to become as the pioneers, the people, the, the, the people that God used to raise up this movement, and then our children will be the people that will finish the work. And the movement will come to an end, a glorious end. That's what we need to do. To raise a generation for the glory of God that will finish, finish the work and be able for the, by the grace of God to go home. Now I, I want to go to the area of educating the little ones. If you go to the Spirit of Prophecy, it talks about zero to three years. That's one period. Then the second one is four years to seven years. That's period number two. And then the last period is from eight to twelve. But before I go there, I, I want to read to you a portion of the Bible. Let's, let's go to the book of Judges. Book of Judges, chapter 13, I believe. And there we find the story of Samson. And we see what God did to that family. Because God appeared to the mother and then to the father. And let's see what happened. Let's, let's read it. Judges. 13, 3, and says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren. So she was not able to have children. And beareth not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. That's a promise. Christ came. He said to the woman, you cannot have children, but don't worry, you will have a son. Now therefore, beware. I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son, and no razor shall come to his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the one and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. See, God had a purpose for Samson. He was going to be the instrument of deliverance. The people of God 
were afflicted by the Philistines. And God says, I'm going to raise a son from you, lady, and you're going to be careful what you eat. You're going to be careful what you do before you even get pregnant. Because the son that is going to come from you, he's going to have a special work to do for me in behalf of my people. He's going to be a Nazarite. That means someone that was set apart for a special mission, a special work. So Christ came and instructed the mother what to do with her, what to eat, what not to eat, and so forth. Let's see what happened. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me. And his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. But I asked him not to hence he was, neither to he me his name. And he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive a bear a son, and now drink not wine, not strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O oh my Lord, let the man of God which thou did send come again unto me and teach us what he, what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. So we see that now the father is pleading with God. He said, please God, send back that messenger because I want you through him to tell us what to do with the little one. My wife said that he's going to be special and he has a work to do for you. So please, because we don't know, we have no experience. We have no children. We have never done this before. And we know that this special son that is going to be born, he's going to be special. And we want to train him in such a way that he will do the work that you want him to do for you. Verse 9, and God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field, but Manoah, her husband, was not with her. So see, God answers prayers. They prayed, they pleaded with God, and God answered the prayer. He came back. Notice, the future mother was in the field. So they were in the country. They were not in the cities. They were already in the place that it was the best place to prepare a generation for a special work. Because your children, my children, are called to do a special work at the end of time. They are Nazarites too. Or they should be. Verse 11. Oh, verse 10. And the woman made haste and ran and shut her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And I read, Manua, Manua arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that spake unto, my, unto the woman? And he said, I am. And then the father said, Now let thy words come to pass. Listen, how shall we order the child? How shall we do unto him? Two very important questions. And they were not fathers yet. The baby was not coming yet. The lady was not even pregnant. But they were already concerned about the future son. What is it that you want us to do? How are we to raise that little boy that he will become a, a mighty God, man of God? 
And the angel said unto Manoah, Of all that I have said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh out of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe, let her do it. So the instruction come, come back again. Same instruction. And then God finished it because it's Christ talking to them and saying, please make sure that you follow to the letter what I'm trying to teach you. Because what I'm trying to teach you and tell you is what you need to do with the little boy. Then they decided to bring a meal. And he says, nope, I need to go. I need to go. I cannot stay any longer. And then he went away. And I want to read something to you. And then this is what it says. Verse 21. But the angel of the Lord did, nor, did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. Verse 22, and once again, this is the man talking, the father, the future father, said unto his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen God. Imagine how beautiful that is. God left his throne in heaven, and he came to earth twice, not just one time, twice, to instruct a family how to raise one single son. See, Jesus loves our children very much, more than we can imagine. He loves us also as well and as much, but he loves little ones. He loves our children and he wants to see every one of them in the kingdom of heaven. However, He's willing to come again. And he has given us plenty of instruction here. He has given us book like the Adventist home book. He has given us child guidance book and many other writings, inspired writings. He has come down really to teach us and to instruct us what to do with every child that we have. So Jesus came just to prepare a one family for one, one single son. That's why we need to follow the instruction that God in his mercy has, has given us. And I want to go back to the time when the mother is not even a mother yet. It's just a future mother. I want to read to you from the book, The Adventist Home. And he talks about the prenatal influences. So that's before birth. I read. It says, Women have need of great patience, patience before they are qualified to become mothers. This is important. It's not saying mothers. Say women. So when you, want, when you want to be a mother, you need to be sure that there is patience in you. There's one problem though. No human being can produce patience because patience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So the only way to have patience and abundance of it is by allowing the Holy Spirit to come into our life and then give us the fruit of the Spirit. And patience is one of them. We just read that they need great, not just patience, they need great patience before they are qualified, before they are ready to become mothers. I continue reading God has ordained that they shall be fitted for this work. The work of the mother becomes infinite. Listen to this. 
the work of the mother becomes infinite through her connection with Christ. So mothers, the work that you are doing will last forever. It is beyond understanding. Women's office is sacred. That means that if you are a mother, you are a minister. I mean, you don't have to be a minister in a church. You don't have to be ordained as a pastor. That's not your job. God has already given you a ministry, and that ministry is sacred, and that ministry is beyond human understanding, and that ministry goes through eternity if you are connected and united with Christ. You don't need to follow new ideas about ordination and, and ladies becoming pastors. That's not your job. You have a better job. A job that is more impacting than any job that has ever been given to any human being. Not even the president of a nation. Not even the president of a conference, of a union. Not even anybody on planet Earth can come close to the ministry that God has given you. I continue reading says the presence of Jesus is needed in the home. Why? For the mother's ministries. It's not just one ministry. You have ministries. Many of love may shape the home into a Bethlehem. So you have a ministry. You have ministries of love. And then, because the presence of Jesus is there, your home will become like Bethel. What is the meaning of the word? It means house of God. Ladies, this is beautiful. I mean, this is thrilling. To know that you already have a ministry, and that you have been ordained and commissioned and called by God, and he's qualifying you to do a ministry that will last throughout the eternal ages. We see then the importance of prenatal influence. Is very important than the mother or the mother to be. United with the father to be. Will prepare their homes, will prepare their nest, if you know what I mean. In such a way, when that little boy or that little girl is born, they will be raised, they will be prepared to become Nazarites by following. The instructions that God has given to us. I continue reading to you. Says the husband and the wife are to cooperate. See, this is a teamwork. You are not to work alone. Ladies, husbands, we need to come together as one. That's what God made us. And cooperate in this wonderful work. What a world we would have if all mothers will consecrate themselves on the altar of God and will consecrate their offspring to God, both before and after its birth. So if the mothers, together with the fathers, if all of you and all of us, husband, would have been faithful to God, we would have today a much different world. Instead of a society in crisis, instead of a, of a nation in crisis, instead of churches in crisis, we would have the opposite. Perhaps 
The work would have been done by now. And we would have been in heaven a long time ago. See, God is calling you, ladies, you husbands, also pointing to me, to come together as one. And to allow Jesus to come into our life like he, like he has never come before. And his power, his almighty power, will transform us. Will make us as Jesus is. As we prepare our little ones to finish the most solemn work ever given to humans. Time is running out to finish that work. It's time that we come together as one, husbands and wives. It's time that we bend our knees and fall on our knees and pray God for that work to be finished in us, but also to pray to him that the work will be finished with our children. Samson was prepared for special work. Your children, my children, should also be prepared for a special work. God will give us his grace, his sufficient grace, his powerful grace to accomplish that work. And then we'll see the entire world ready for Jesus' second coming. A small group will be prepared for heaven. Another group will be prepared, but not for heaven. But they have decided not to be prepared for heaven. But they will be ready. And for this first time ever, the entire planet will be ready for Jesus coming. May God bless us as we decide by his grace to accomplish this wonderful work. Mm -hmm.